Hey y'all, Matt here, and uh, I just wanted to take a second and uh, just talk for a second about uh, something I was thinking about on my run this morning. Um, Genesis 3, uh, we see God has created everything on the face of the earth, uh, and he's created Adam and Eve, and he's placed them in the garden, and he tells them to uh, basically to rule and subdue as his image bearers. Um, he's created everything. He's created it good. There's no sin. There's no death. There's no suffering. And um, it's such a state of purity that Adam and Eve are in the garden naked and they're not ashamed. They're at their most vulnerable and they feel absolutely no shame. And we can't even begin to uh, understand what that must have been like because we've never experienced that. Um, you know, scripture says that we've inherited sin from Adam, that sin nature that's within us. And if you've ever tried to stop sinning and you've battled it in your life, you know that it's part of your nature. Um, you can uh, do, you can get better. You can become sanctified over time, and uh, your sin problem gets lesser and lesser. And these smaller sins are revealed to yourself that you need to address. But uh, ultimately, this is something that we're going to battle for the rest of our lives until we die, and uh, Jesus raises us from the dead and gives us our resurrected bodies. This is an issue that's going to, you know, be a big part of our lives. Um, but one thing, when I look back at the garden, I think sometimes we get distracted by uh, the fruit. Uh, we have all these questions like, did it really happen? Is it allegory? Uh, what kind of fruit was it? Was it an apple? Was it a peach? Was it a pear? Whatever. Um, but we get distracted from the fact that uh, what we see there is God has given them everything. He's given them every fruit, every tree, everything to eat, and they've, he's given them rule over it. And what happens is the serpent, this devil figure, this antagonist comes in, the accuser, and all he has to do is place this question of doubt in Eve's mind. And all he has to do is basically say, did God really say? And it puts this question in her mind, did God really say? Uh, is God withholding from me? Um, he's given me everything here, but why can't I take this one thing? Why is he holding out on me? And um, as I've kind of meditated on this, I've seen that uh, this goes a lot further than um, just their original sin. And I can look at it and I can uh, relate this back to everything in my life that is sin or that is outside of the will of God. Uh, all of it starts here. You know, it doesn't matter what we're dealing with, whether it's pornography or lust or uh, doubt in the Lord, uh, no matter what it is. Uh, typically, what we end up seeing is we get this question in our mind. Does God really say? Does God really care? Is God holding out on me? And this is a problem that I had, uh, especially when I was a new believer. Like, why does God care what I do? Why does he, uh, you know, care who I sleep with or what I'm watching on TV or why does he care uh, if I'm a drunk or, or whatever. And uh, I understand now that it's because, you know, God is a holy God and he can't allow that sin in his presence. And ultimately he wants us restored to him. He wants us in communion with him. He wants us to walk with him, but that requires us to be holy. Otherwise we can't be in his presence. And um, so Going back to Genesis 3, any sin in your life is kind of like this fruit. Uh, God tells you not to do it. And um, if it's something that you're struggling with and that you give into, then basically all you're doing is you're doing just like what Eve did. You're seeing it, you're doubting what God says, and you're taking it for yourself. This seeing and taking is the pattern. Um, we see that something is good we want it and we decide that we know better than God. It's, it's sometimes it's fun to be our own gods for a brief time until it all comes crashing down. Um, but then we take it and uh, that is where we mess up. That's where instead of uh, seeing and taking, we need to lean into the Lord and we need to uh, truly trust in him. We need to go to the scriptures. We need to read about his promises because he's established himself through time, through thousands of years of faithfulness and that's how we know that his future promises of restoration are true because he's established himself he has thousands of years of uh, history of being a faithful god 
um, you know, typically, you know, you can know somebody for a year and you have a, you, you either trust them or you don't, you know, their integrity, you know, their character, God's character is established over thousands of years. I mean, ultimately since, uh, you know, the creation of the world, but what we have documented in our Bible is thousands of years of his faithfulness. And instead of, uh, being our own gods, we have to lean into that and trust that. But I love y'all blessings.